all of the yarns that, oh no, I set my basket on my computer and I deleted something. Okay, there we go. Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 131 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is a chilly but pretty sunny day here in New York City. Uh, we've had strange weather. It was like super warm and then it was blasting snow for about 10 minutes. I learned it's called a squall, I think, or squalling. I don't know. Anyway, then it completely stopped. So it's just cold in the 20s and sunny and that's great because it's a Sunday and after this I am just gonna like cozy up with some of my projects and hang out and that's like the perfect weather for the day. Toaster's here with me today too. He's all bundled up. <laughs> Sunday I wash um, our sheets always so I need to do that after this so I'm just like whatever I don't even care just put all the blankets and toaster bundled up there because he absolutely loves it um I am wearing my long summer cardigan today this is the long summer cardigan by Hohi Locatelli it is very long goes down to my knees and I just have on like my my ducks t-shirt because that's what I was already wearing and I was like oh I need something warm I was wearing my robe I'm like that won't be <laughs> this is not a pajama party I should put on something else so I grabbed my long summer cardigan I don't know why I don't just wear this more than my robe because this is super comfortable too I knit this at the end or I started in August of 2021 and then I finished it at, in December at the end of the year and so it's pretty recent finish I used all moon glow yarn company and the project page will be linked down below but I use this fade set and you're actually going to see this pink fade set um, in another project here in just a minute so I do have some finished objects today. This is the last podcast of February, so I'm gonna be giving you a stash update. We got lots of good stuff, so let's get started. All right, firstly, I have a finished object. This is a hat for my husband, Kent. I've just named the project Kent's Hat, but the original pattern I've linked in the project page is called Two by Two, ribbed for his pleasure, which is very hilarious. And it's by Tink's uh, Darker Side, but the pattern has been removed from Ravelry. However, it was a free pattern. It's basically just two by two rib. It was one size and I ended up changing some things about the decreases anyway. So I have all of that in my project page notes. So you can pretty much just get, you know, what the information you need from my project page notes, but I would suggest linking it back to the original designer, just in case the designer comes back to Ravelry, then all the credit will go to that designer. So I used botanical yarn in the String Thing Studio colorway. This was an exclusive colorway for String Thing Studio, which is in Brooklyn. Now that I'm done, the label goes away. <laughs> I don't need it anymore. And it's like a micro striping. I'm kind of, kind of curious what this would do in socks, but you can see that like the striping got thicker as I decreased my stitch count and, you know, looks kind of different at the top, which is, which is cool. But I really do like the effect of how it looked over the whole pattern. I know this looks really small, but it's actually super stretchy um, because it's two by two ribbing. So it's actually quite big. And then it's made to be worn folded up like so. So you get like a double layer of warmth on your ears. Uh, this is made for Kent, of course, but he already has one. There we go, he already has one. Actually, that fits me pretty well too. And I definitely have a smaller head, at least by a few inches than uh, Kent. Um, but yeah, this is a great hat pattern and it's it's great because it uses up half of a skein of fingering weight yarn, which is usually what a pair of socks does for me. I've got 50 grams just about left. So I can't remember exactly how much I have left, but about 50 grams remaining. And so, you know, it's kind of nice to have something to do with you, your 50 gram skeins. You might not be able to get it quite as long, but um, it does work out quite nicely. So I changed a few things, like I said, from the original pattern. And what I tried new this time is doing a tubular cast on. I don't know if you can tell. So the tubular cast on is a more like rounded edge 
and I did the two by two tubular cast on. I don't know if it made all that much of a difference, honestly, but I do think it has a more finished edge. And I use Andrea Mallory's tutorial for this. She has a great one. And I think it's worth the trouble of doing it for the next time I make this hat. I think it just looks nice. Uh, the other thing I did is I changed the decreases. So in the original pattern, there's four decreases and I changed it to five because I just think it kind of um, doesn't make the top quite so pointy. I mean, it's still a little pointy, but when you wear it, the five sets of decreases spiral out a little better, whereas four decreases will kind of point up more. So it just depends on the look that you're going for, I suppose. And if you saved my project in your favorites, I saw several people had like saved the project, I'm guessing to go back and look at the notes, come back to it because I actually had to fix a couple things when I actually went through the decreases here. I realized I had an error. Like I think I needed to repeat the, the original decreases like one more time than I had put on there. And then also the whole time I was doing the rib, I was starting the round with knit two and then purl two, but actually in the pattern, it's purl two and then knit two. So before you start the decreases, you need to kind of rearrange the beginning of your round. So it starts with purl two and that way all your decreases will be nice and smooth. So I adjusted that in the notes of the project page. So just go back and check that if you're trying to follow this pattern, but I think it turned out great. It's already washed, blocked, ready for Kent to wear now. I just needed to show it off on the podcast and now he can have it. I'm not quite sure what to do with this, but we'll talk about it more in just a little bit. Cause again, this is the hair feels funny. This is the stash update episode. So I have lots of thoughts about stash. Okay. Let's go into whips. I have my basket kind of far away today. The first whip, um, I mostly focused on finishing that hat this week. I haven't had a ton of knitting time, I guess less than I, I've had a ton of knitting time, but less than I normally have. Cause I've just been really busy this week. I've been working a lot more. Um, but I did get to work on my cowl just a little bit. So this is the all together now cowl by Jamie Lomax. The ribbing is flipping up, but it should be fine once I block it. All Together Now Cowl by Jamie Lomax. I am knitting the tapered version. And in case you're wondering, yes, these are the same pinks. <laughs> so I am using leftovers from this sweater to do this cowl. The main color is a different, uh, different than this. So this is, um, I can't remember what this gray is called. I'm forgetting, but I know that the creamy color here is called Cottonwood Breeze. It's all Moon Glow Yarn Company, and I just wanted to, you know, use up some stash because I've got huge leftovers, like 40 gram leftovers, and then I had like 60 grams or something of this one from the sweater, from the sea glass tee, and so I wanted a way to use up lots of different leftovers. Sorry, I think I just kicked it. I haven't done a ton uh, since the last time I showed it, and that's because I keep messing it up. <laughs> I keep messing up this pattern. It's not a super difficult pattern, but I think because the chart is in black and white and the color on the chart that's the lightest is actually not my lightest color, I keep getting confused. So what I did in Knit Companion is I got the little like pencil tool, I changed it to a darker pink, and then I shaded in all of the white squares that are actually pink squares for me. And I'm hoping that's going to keep me from making more mistakes. I've had to rip out a total of four rows, two different times because I goofed. And then the first time I went two rows past. And so I had to take out all of that. And then I think it was last night I, I goofed again and I just had to tink one row, but that's when I was like, forget this. I'm not going to make this mistake again. We're going to come up with a solution. And that's when I got into my knit companion and colored those squares in, and I'm hoping that's gonna prevent me from doing it again. Um, but I would really like to finish this up in the next week because this is my next closest project to being, well, that's not true. I'm gonna show another one, but this one's really close to being finished. I am halfway through the fourth of six repeats, so I am getting really, really close, and I think it's gonna be so nice and cozy, and I just, I really like how it's looking. I'm still gonna have a ton of yarn left over um, after I finish this, but there is a matching hat. It still won't use up all of my yarn, but I'm considering it. I don't know if I will do it for sure, cause I'm like, how many hats do I need? <laughs> but I, I think it'd be kind of cute to have a matching set. So we'll see, I haven't made any plans 
about what I'm going to do next with this yarn, but I am really enjoying the way that this is turning out. It's looking super beautiful. So that's kind of my main, my main project right now, except that I am getting really close on another project. My socks from Christmas. I want these things off the needles. I am telling you, I hope to finish these honestly like today because I'm so close. So this is the second sock. I have done the foot, the heel, Fish Lips Kiss heel, and part of the leg since I last podcast. And I have had these as a whip since late November. <laughs> and they're just, they've just been sitting here. I finished one sock and then I've just been slowly working on things here and there. I'm just not in a sock mood, like as far as just having a simple project right now. I'm doing a sock course and I'm way more into like working on the sock as like, a, you know, experimenting with things and figuring out measurements and stuff like that. So I'm saving all of my sock energy for the course. I don't really care to work on just vanilla socks as like a side project right now. I think I'm a little more into hats. Like I really enjoy doing that two by two rib hat. So I'm in a hat phase, I guess, <laughs> not a sock phase right now. So I want to get these off the needles and then I can just, you know, maybe cast on some more. I don't know. We'll see. I, I, I'm kind of, you know, I'm just trying to figure out what's bringing me joy right now as far as um, knitting goes and just staying focused on that. But anyway, I am, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm 13 rounds away from the cuff ribbing. I don't do a very long leg, usually just 40 rounds. So I should definitely be able to get that finished in the next couple of days, which would be excellent. So you may see these guys as a finished object next week fingers crossed. Okay, the other thing that I have been doing is swatching. Where did my swatch go? I have swatched for, or finished the swatch rather, I think I showed the beginning of it uh, last week. I have finished my swatch for the prismatic sweater. So this is a swatch for the pattern Prismatic by Wool and Pine Designs. It's a beautiful sweater, mostly stockinette, but then it has a yoke design that looks like this. Uh, I think I'm holding it the right way. Anyway, these are not actually the colors that I'm gonna use. Well, okay, they are this color and the darker color, I am, but then I'm going to use pink, and I have it right here. I'm going to use pink, I'm gonna use a stash yarn, as the stained glass, which is everything like in between. So I'm actually gonna be using this color, but because I have a partial skein, I figured out that I have just a little more than enough with the, um, I weighed it and I calculated the yardage and I have just, I have, a, I have enough with insurance for my size. <laughs> But I didn't want to risk it by also using this for the swatch because I did one of those like cheat swatches in the round where you cut. So I can't reuse this yarn. So I'm like, you know what? I've got plenty of this. I've got plenty of the darker color. Let me use another stash yarn I have. Um, actually, it's just a scrap yarn that's in the same base. And this will give me the information that I need. So I like these colors a lot and they're really pretty, but these are not the colors I'm planning to use. It's the gray, the dark gray, and this. And I think that's going to be super fun. So I finished the swatch. This took me the better part of a night and I got a gauge. Yay. So I ended up having to go down several needle sizes. I'm on a two and a half for the stockinette and a three for the color work. And this makes, um, it makes the stitch gauge match, but the row gauge is actually bigger on color work. It's so interesting. Like, you know, I've been kind of, doing more color work lately and when you combine color work along with something like stockinette a lot of times it's good to go up a needle size for the color work portion i actually use this in my sweetheart sock design you use a your regular needle size for like the ribbing the heel the foot and the toe and then you go up a needle size for all of the color work on the leg and this just helps to match the gauge match the tension more evenly but the row gauge is bigger. So I was super diligent and I measured before I blocked and then I blocked it and then I measured after. So I'm hoping that things will, you know, translate to the sweater and come out nicely because I've been, I've done my due diligence to get that done. 
Okay, one more um, project. I, and again, I haven't worked on this, um, but I do have this going as a whip. Oh, you know what? I just realized I don't think I showed the label for the sock yarn. So sorry, let me come back to this. The sock yarn I'm using, Mountain Mist Yarn, and this was the Castle at Night colorway. All my projects are linked down below. So I do have, do try to have all the details there. Okay, so I have had this idea that I will do Scrappy Sunday. And I kind of knew that this would kind of, this like feeling to do that would kind of ebb and flow. Um, but I haven't worked on it in a couple Sundays because last week I didn't have any finished objects to have leftover yarn. This week I do, but I'm not sure I want to use it. And today is Sunday, so I haven't, I've been working this morning, um, but I haven't um, sat down to knit or crochet yet, so I could end up working on this. I don't know. So here is what I've got so far. This is my scrappy granny stripes. It's folded in half twice right now. So this is actually the length that I'm showing you, not the width. Um, but you can kind of see overall, like my scrap colors, my yarns, what they kind of look like. So I'm wondering, would you put this yarn into it? Because my plan was to get in the habit of every time I finish a project that's fingering weight, I will take the leftovers and I will do my two rows to make a stripe and then I'll decide what to do with the, the rest of the leftovers from there. Um, this way, you know, on weeks that I'm kind of into it, I can do even more rows because I have all these, you know, scrap yarns that I haven't put into the blanket yet. But then I at least have that habit of like finish one project, add it in, go to the next one, and then it will kind of tell a story, you know? So would you add that? I mean, I was thinking no, but now that I kind of see it, I think it will be fine. I mean, this is supposed to be super scrappy. I'm not planning things out particularly. Like I'm trying not to put colors next to each other if I really don't like them, but it's not perfect. So would you add that? And then would you add, because hopefully I'm gonna finish these socks here real soon. Would you add this one? See, most of my yarns are more speckled than variegated. And I think these two yarns are more variegated slash stripey. I haven't put, I don't like the way that self-striping particularly looks in here in the scrappy granny. So would you put these in? Let me know what you think. And I will try to make a decision from there. So I just wanted to show that kind of share my decision making progress or process. I'm having trouble speaking today. I need to do some more knitting so that I'm ready to talk. Um, but yeah, I have this uh, Granny Stripe Blanket project linked down below with all of my other ones. And I think I will just add this 50 gram right here to the top. So if I decide to add it into the blanket, adding it into this giant bag that I have, who is this by? A uh, little skein in the big wool. So this is, this is a sweater bag. Adding that in there and then if I want to, I can add it to the blanket. If not, I will do with it what I do with my other scraps. It's time to talk stash update. So it's the last podcast of the month, the last podcast of February, and I am going to take the last podcast of the month and just give an update for my stash journey. So if you have not seen it yet, I will link this video down below. At the beginning of the year of 2022, I declared <laughs> that I want to eliminate my stash. And I haven't, you know, defined it outright, but I'm kind of heading towards zero skeins. Do I really want absolutely zero skeins in my stash? Probably not. I mean, I need a little bit of just in case there, but the whole goal is that I want to get my stash to a place where it doesn't make me feel guilty. Like I need to be working from it and not um, rather getting things that are like in my interest at the moment. Um, there's lots of like, this is just a, at my own personal like preference and opinion right now things could always change. But I talk about that a lot more in that Eliminate Stash video. So head there and check it out if you are interested in that. So let's go back to the end of January. At the end of January, 
um, I counted up all of my yarn. This was the same number that I had at the beginning of the year because in January I just focused on um, completing whips that I already had from the previous year and I was not work focused on like using up my stash by casting on more projects. So my end of January and beginning of January number are the same and that was 49 skeins of yarn. So 49 skeins at the end of January. Now we're at the end of February and I am looking at about 45-ish skeins in my stash and I'm going to explain that here um, as well as talk about some other things. So I have completed one project out of stash yarn and that was this hat and it used up half of a skein but I decided that, you know, I am only going to be counting something as stash yarn if it's a full and complete skein or leftovers that I counted at the beginning of this year. I'm not going to like finish something and then be like, oh, I have 50 grams left. You know, that skein is going back into my stash as a skein. I used this yarn. It is out of my stash now. I think that's great for me right now to just focus on for this year. And then as I kind of develop this process of like working through my projects more efficiently, I will start using uh, more of my leftovers. I'm not just like tossing, throwing the skein away or anything, but like maybe one day I will get to the point where, you know, I'm, I don't really have much in stash and I buy a new skein and I make a hat and then I'm like, oh, I have 50 grams left and I make a pair of socks. That would be really great. And right now I don't want to do that because I, one, I just work with this and so I don't really want to work with it again right away. And two, I'm like, I'd rather go work through a new skein in my stash and get it started. It does have me kind of scheming ideas for projects that take most of a skein because that is very nice, <laughs> very nice indeed. But most projects are not gonna be like that. You're always gonna have, you know, some kind of leftovers because you know, pattern designers kind of need to put that in there for a little bit of insurance in case, you know, you use a little bit more yarn than, than they thought. So that was one skein. And then the other four, I am still in progress. And that is, hold on, let me grab it, put it away. All of the yarns that, oh no, I set my basket on my computer and it deleted something. Okay, there we go all of the yarns that I'm using in this cowl. So they're partial skeins. There were seven 40-ish gram skeins, and I just counted that as four skeins of yarn. So I am using them now. When I am done with this project, even though there will still be leftovers, I am no longer going to count them as stash skeins. So when this project is done, even though I will have leftovers that I will keep, I am going to consider those out of my stash. And moving forward, I will only like, you know, count yarns as stash if they are full and intact skeins. I think I'll just drive myself crazy if I'm really, if I get too nitpicky and try to like really get down to zero. And again, I can make that my goal for this year. And then for the next year I can go, okay, now I really want to like, you know, crush my leftovers and get rid of all of those. So that's kind of how I am I'm dealing with things. So 49 at the end of January, and we're looking at 45 skeins here in February. I have a little updated video of how my little stash cubes are looking. And my goal is to have my yarns fit into one cube mid-year, so at the end of June, which of course they would all fit into one cube now if I switched them, but like I want them to fit into one cube easily, like only filling it halfway up so I can actually play around with it and stuff. So here's what I've been thinking about as far as like leftovers, because that was something that I didn't really consider um, at the beginning of the year when I started my Eliminate Stash journey. And, oh, okay, so saying this, that I haven't added any skeins to stash this month. So 49 at the start, I pulled out four. Oh, I guess that was just three skeins then, I'm sorry. The pink, um, 
is that math right? 49 minus 45 is four, one for the hat and then three for the cowl. So sorry, I had seven partial skeins. I counted them as three total skeins. So three, okay. So 49 at the end of January and 45 now here at the end of February. So four skeins total out of stash. Again, leftovers for that are not going back into stash, although I am hanging on to them as leftovers. The other thing is that I'm gonna look at if I purchase anything or sometimes I get sent yarn for um, designs and projects and I did not get any new yarn this month. Yay, <laughs> that's actually really good. Um, I did not get any new yarn. In fact, I actually used yarn that I had for a design um, and used it all up for my playtime cowl. That's actually a great pattern. It's gonna be coming out in March. It's a crochet cowl that uses up most of a skein. The double loop version uses up 90 grams and the single loop version uses up 70 grams. And then my testers are gonna test it and tell me like their averages and then I'll get the you know the average average, but that's pretty great. I like that a lot. So, that didn't count because I forgot to add that into my stash total. I had it in my my um, in my pattern basket. Anyway, I did want to talk about leftovers because technically, I finished my sea glass tea and had all of this yarn left. I'm not going to get rid of this. I love this yarn. I had a thought about maybe. Um, giving it away, which I still might do in the future. I'm not in this video, but I had, a, I had a thought about maybe giving this yarn away because, you know, I made my beautiful rainbow sea glass tea. I, I love it, love it. This yarn is amazing. It's Moon Glow. It was her rainbow advent calendar. And I'm like, you know, I really, really like this. <sighs> Dog hair. And I have to figure out, am I gonna use this again? So I don't know the answer to that. So right now this is sitting behind my stash so that I can figure out if I want to use it again for another project or what I want to do with it. But I'm not counting this as stash skeins, even though this was leftovers that went back into stash. Okay, I think I've said that enough times. Leftovers are not counting as stash. And I think that's just gonna make things a lot easier for me to, to manage. So let's talk about plans for March and what I'm gonna do to continue on this journey of finishing up and eliminating my stash. I did the math at the end of January and I had 49, when I had 49 skeins, I divided it of over 11 months and figured out that I need to use up about four and a half skeins <laughs> per month. So four for February, even though I'm not done with that project yet, I need to finish that project. And then that's good. We're pretty much on track. So maybe I can try to use around four or five this month. So this is what I've come up with. I know for sure, then I'm going to be casting on the prismatic sweater. That's the swatch that I showed. So the prismatic sweater by Wool and Pine. I have these stash yarns. Even though these are not full skeins, I did count them in my original stash video. Um, well, these are actually full skeins. Sorry, these are full skeins. This is a partial. So I'm counting this along with, I think there's another one of these as four total. So if I work on this sweater, that will be four skeins out of stash. If there's any left over, it doesn't count as stash going back into it. <laughs> so that's uh, that's one of my plans that will get rid of a lot of stash and I'm also really excited to knit that sweater. I started looking through my queue that I created and you know saw if anything kind of caught my interest and I decided that I will probably want to make a everyday or an everyday Sachi beanie by Tristan of Dragon Horde Yarns. I have these lovely yarns that I got in October at India Untangled from So Happy Jane, and I will hold them together to make this hat. So I think that will be the, a great next project for me to get started on. Um, sometime after I get my sweater going for a little bit, then I can cast this on and just have a nice simple project. And this will use up two skeins, even though it probably won't use them all, but it will be counting as two skeins gone from stash. So four for the sweater, two for the hat, that's six, if I get them started in March. And, I'll, and again, this is all just like scheming and goals. I'll have to see what I actually, you know, get into and I'll update it at the end of March. The last thing is that 
Um, we're actually going to be traveling to Florida and it's really hot and sticky there. So I'm not sure if I'm going to want to work on something with mohair outside when it's like 90 in Florida. So I thought I might start a new pair of socks. I know I said I'm kind of like not feeling socks right now, but I really want to work through um, my perfect fit formula while I'm teaching the class so that I can just kind of be working through things as everyone is doing it so I can like be in the moment again and answer questions. And I thought that this would be the perfect thing to cast on for Disney. This is from Fangirl Fibers and this is the full skein that came in this past year's advent. I don't remember what the real name is for this, but I know that I got a fluke skein <laughs> and look at what it says. Why won't Karen take me to Disneyland? So Emily of Fangirl Fiber says her mom's name is actually Karen. And so she thought that was a super funny joke, but she actually didn't name all of the skeins. This, I think only a couple of them were by like accident. And I'm so happy that I got one because I love the name, <laughs> but I don't remember what the real name is, but the color is so much fun. So I'm really excited to work with this. This will be my first Fangirl Fibers yarn because I opened the advent calendar but haven't done anything with it yet. Also, my advent leftovers don't count as stash. <laughs> I have a lot of like exceptions here to the stash rule, but one step at a time, one step at a time. We're working through 100 gram skeins. So if I am able to do the sweater and the sweater, that's four, the hat, and socks, that would be seven skeins, even if I don't finish them in March, just out of the stash, start it into projects. So I am gonna see what happens. And of course, I'll be updating you as I cast on new projects throughout the podcast, and then we'll return at the end of March to see how things went. We have just a short bit of news for this week. So I do have a new video that went out on Tuesday all about Knit Companion. Knit Companion is the app that I like to use for all of my knitting patterns when I'm working through them. It works for crochet patterns as well in the text and everything. Um, but I really like having my patterns digitally for many, many reasons. I like to zoom in on instructions. I like to be, to be able to like digitally mark on them. Like I shared with the All Together Now cowl, it's nice to like be able to change the colors of a pin and draw in stuff on the chart when it's black and white. Anyway, in that video, I'm sharing with you how I actually set up my prismatic sweater, like getting it all ready, getting the pattern into Knit Companion, um, and showed a, different, a few different features about Knit Companion. Of course, I didn't show anything about this pattern that's not on the Ravelry page because it's a paid for pattern. So I wanted to protect that, but I did show um, a few different things. And yeah, there's this new feature called Knitting Calculators. It's pretty cool. So I'll link the video. You can go uh, check it out. It's kind of a, a vlog style. Um, the Sweetheart Sock Along is continuing on. It will be ending on Monday, February 28th. So continue to post on Instagram, hashtag Sweetheart Sock Along. And Whitney and I are gonna have an Instagram Live on Monday, February 28th at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So we're gonna pair up again together and close out the make along. And I'm excited for that, it's gonna be really fun. We're also going to have a make along starting April 1st. I am partnering up with Yarnia. They're a yarn shop in New Jersey and we are doing a shawl make along. So look out on Instagram for a uh, voting form because we had a lot of different designers, um, smaller designers that have uh, patterns with Ravelry projects that, are, that have less than 25 projects. We wanna highlight them and so we, um, called for submissions and we narrowed it down and now we have a top few and we want you to vote and choose the final one. So look out on Instagram for that. I think it should be this week that we're actually voting and then more information about the make along will come out all of March and then we'll actually get started on April 4th, I think is the date, but I'll keep sharing more then. Um, my sock course, Perfect Fit Socks launched this week. However, I don't think that there will be any spots left by the time the podcast posts. I'm really not sure what will happen, but I have limit, a limited number of spots 
um, because there are some live components that I'm doing as part of the course. And I want to make sure that it's small enough that I'm able to like answer questions and help everyone. So if the course is still open, then I will have the link for you to get all the information down below. And if it is closed, I will have a different link that will have um, a place where you can put your name and email if you are interested in the course but didn't get a spot and want to be informed when it opens up again. So yeah, just look down below and see which link is there and then either take a look at the course, see if it's right for you, or add your name to the waiting list for the next time that it launches. Let's talk about life. There is not much to tell you about this past week. It's been pretty boring over here because I have been working my tail off getting ready for things this week. I have still been doing really well with my, um, you know, setting my schedule and sticking with it, but I did kind of like on each end of the day <laughs> expand my work hours and I've been working over the weekend. So I am feeling pretty tired and I am ready for this vacation that we actually have coming up. And that's why also I I needed to kind of get more things done in this week. So it's totally fine, not complaining at all. I absolutely love working. And if working a little harder means I get to take a break when I'm in Florida, then I am, I am so happy to do that. So not complaining, just don't really have much to share about this week because I basically just worked. <laughs> I worked really hard and I knitted a little bit, which I just showed you. And that is it. <laughs> that is all that I did. We did have a friend in town. Um, it was really more one of Ken's friends. So he ended up hanging out with him most of the time during the day while I worked. And then I just kind of joined them for dinner here and there. So that was totally fine. Um, but we did have fun this week, this past week. Um, in the membership, we did an interview with the designer of the All Together Now Cowl, which was really fun. I enjoyed that a lot. We got to interview Jamie, who designed this. Really, really fascinating to hear from other uh, designers and just like their process and how they think. And it was really cool. One of my favorite things she said was um, that knitting color work is kind of like drawing with yarn, which I totally agree with. I thought that was super cool. So that was my fun. <laughs> this past week was like knitting. And again, I'm more than fine with that. But this upcoming week, we are going to be traveling to Florida. We're taking Toaster with us. We're going to see my mother-in-law. We're going to go to Disney. I'm going to be like half working, half enjoying vacation. So you, if you try to email me over the next week or so, you'll get like a, an auto reply just saying like, Hey, you know, I'm on vacation. So it'll take me a little longer to reply. And I'll be kind of like checking in every couple of days, um, for emails and messages and stuff like that. So if you don't hear from me as quickly over the next week, that is why I'm doing a working vacation in Florida. We're also going to be running running, walking, the princess half marathon on Sunday. So I'm really excited for that. I'm, I feel pretty confident about it, but you just never know. Like, you know, the last time I did a half marathon, I think was five or six years ago. And obviously like, I'm still pretty young. <laughs> I'm averagely fit, I guess, but I'm nowhere near where I was five or six years ago. So I'm just like, kind of excited to prove to myself that I can do this and, you know, run, we're going to run, run, walk the marathon. And I think it will be fun. I'm just kind of, you know, it's kind of fun to do something, a physical challenge and complete it, which is why I also get a lot of joy, I think from knitting, because it's like a physical challenge that I can do and complete. So I think it'll be really fun, but that's, what's coming up for us over this next week. I didn't watch a ton of TV like I did last weekend. <laughs> um, several of you said you watched the Tinder Swindler since I mentioned it on last week's podcast. If you haven't yet, you should totally watch it. Definitely a fascinating documentary, but I've been watching mostly Gossip Girl. I'm still in the first season. I think there's like 20 episodes of Gossip Girl per season. So that's great because it's going to keep me occupied for a long time. So I'm watching Gossip Girl right now. I did finish my Knitting Murder Mystery book by Maggie Sefton. I was reading book 14, Knit to be Tied. I also said last week I thought I missed one of the books, but I looked back at book 13 and I read it. So I had not missed any books. So I have two more to go in the series 
and I'm just going to kind of space them out between other books, I think. Um, the, new, the new book that I started is the fourth Bridgerton book. I love these Bridgerton books. They're so good. I got the trilogy from the library, so I like to rent my books or um, borrow my books from the digital library. I use an app called Overdrive. That's my preferred one. I know a lot of people like Libby, but I really don't care for Libby. Um, I think because I use Overdrive first and Libby doesn't always have the books that I need for some reason. I don't even know if that's true, but I just use o Overdrive because I really like it. So I borrow my books from the library. I got the trilogy of the Bridgerton books four through six. So I'm probably going to be making my way through those. <laughs> that's probably what I'm going to do for the next like several books. So I'm reading book four, Romancing Mr. Bridgerton and love them. They're seriously the best. Weekly wins this week. I am just super excited that my Perfect Fit Sock course is finally open. People are joining and they're really excited about it. And I'm really excited about it. It's so fun to be using my like teaching skills with knitting, which is something that I love. Because if you didn't know, I taught elementary school and I taught in a classroom for three years and then I taught as a reading specialist for almost four years. So seven, almost seven years altogether. I'm just gonna say seven years because really I stopped in at like the end of the school year last year pretty much. Um, so I have definitely like teaching is so fulfilling to me to see somebody learn something and it's just really great. So I am so proud of myself for this sock class. It's not just the class itself when you're, you know, developing a course like this. I have learned so many new skills about like web design in a sense, like how to get everything so that it looks pretty good and people can like click through different stuff and Man, I had no idea I was going to need to know all of these skills when I started out, but I learned them along the way and I feel really good about that. I learned a lot of things about like communicating and, and selling stuff and it was just all really interesting. But um, I'm mostly just excited that people are excited for the course and seem to already feel like they're getting value out of it. So that makes me feel really good. I have a lot of ideas too for like future um, things that I want to teach. I am not going to share anything yet because I am focused on this sock class and I have not let my brain wander too far on like thinking of things in the future. But I know that there's so much um, opportunity to do things really cool that are even more than just like, okay, you know, for this course, we're going to learn how to knit socks. We're going to learn how to measure our foot. We're going to learn how to do the math and convert them and, and learn about sock des design and all of that stuff. That's going to be so awesome. But I can also see it being a really cool avenue for people who are just like maybe a new knitter or maybe crocheter. And they're like, okay, I want, I just know the basics and I want to get to like, from like basics to sweater. Like how can we get there? And it could be like something really fun where we spend, you know, a month working on like a basic hat. And then like the next month we like, add new skills and we make a cowl and then the next month we add even build even more skills and we make a shawl and then like we do this for maybe six months and at the end our last thing is like okay now we're making a sweater and you just get to like have accountability and um, other people that are interested in the same things as you and lots of people that ask questions and get help and you're not alone you know trying to learn these new skills anyway I guess I have let my brain wander, <laughs> wander into like further things, but I'm just, I'm so excited about this. I'm really proud of myself. And I always want to share these weekly wins, not to be like, oh, look at what I did this week or anything, but to encourage you to also look at the things that you're doing and be proud of yourself because it is a big thing <laughs> to, to be able to look at your own self and say that like, hey, what I'm doing is, is good. Um, I guess another smaller thing, I didn't write this down, is we finally put our Christmas decorations away. <laughs> we had them all boxed up for like weeks, but we have a storage unit that's like not even that far away, but it's probably a 30 minute process to put all the stuff in the wagon, go to the storage unit, get the ladder. Da -da -da. It's just like a process. And so we finally did that and our house feels so much, you know, bigger because like our 
boxes are not sitting there and it's like cleaner and it's great. So there's just a small win for the week that actually felt really, really good. Something we'd been putting off that we finally got done. So I love stuff like that too. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. The next time I see you, maybe a podcast from Florida. So stay tuned. I'll keep you updated on Instagram with what is to come and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Fire, let's keep